We're going to look now at mitigation measures you can take to prevent incidents from occurring and at things you can do to lessen the impact of incidents that do occur. You should approach mitigation with the same rigor that you approach disaster planning and get everyone on your staff involved. Work with outside resources and take a broad view, thinking about your entire facility. The first line of mitigation, if you will, is maintenance. Bill Boyer is facilities manager at the Norman Rockwell Museum. The most important thing to maintaining a, a building in good operating condition is to have a, a well-documented program of inspections to make sure that you keep on top of the maintenance of the equipment so that something doesn't fall through the cracks. We um, regularly inspect um, interior and exterior components of the buildings on the exterior we'll do a regular inspection of our roof system. Um, we have slate roof, and so we want to make sure that all the slates are intact and not cracked. We also um, have uh, gutters on the building as well as the, the tent that we have, and we um, will check those on a regular basis to make sure that the leaves are not clogging and downspouts. Um, we also um, check the, um, all the uh, windows and doors to make sure that they are sound um, and intact to make sure that the, uh, the peeling paint is uh, not a problem or that um, the hardware has not come loose. Um, make sure that all the door hinges are, are tight. Uh, we also uh, want to make sure that all the siding is, uh, is well maintained um, to make sure that the, uh, <clears throat> there's no peeling paint um, so we avoid the, the rot of the uh, siding. We always go around inspecting the outsides of our buildings um, to make sure that there aren't any um, environmental threats to the buildings. Um, we make sure that all the trees, particularly around the buildings, are well maintained. Any dead limbs are removed. We also have many acres of hay fields we'll um, mow so that the uh, there's no risk of fire. Um, we have a lot of visitors on the site and so we're always looking to make sure that our pathways are in good condition, that there aren't any trip hazards. Um, in the winter time, obviously, we have to be concerned about ice and snow. Having a good fire extinguisher program is important. To know where all the fire extinguishers in the building are, to know how to use them, as well as having a thorough inspection plan in place is important for good fire safety. Different types of extinguishers, um, if used improperly, can actually make the fire worse. This here is a pressurized water extinguisher to be used on ordinary combustibles such as paper and wood products. We also have dry chemical extinguishers which um, can be used on a variety of fires. Actually, a dry chemical can be used on any type of fire, um, whether it be paper, wood, electrical fires, or flammable liquids. So we do train our staff on the different types of extinguishers to use in the event of a particular fire. We do have a, um, a worksheet which we have on a monthly basis or quarterly basis. We will hire and contract to do some of the inspections. The fire and security system obviously is very important to us. So we develop a history um, of how the equipment is operating and so we can, we can see trends or, or patterns. We practice good housekeeping measures. We want to make sure that um, the building is kept clean at all times, um, that we don't um, use our hallways as storage areas. Um, we, we are strict about making sure that people store all of their materials in proper storage areas. Um, we minimize storage of any um, materials that aren't required in mechanical rooms. Um, if, if we were to have a fire in the mechanical room, Damaging the equipment could cause our building to have to close for a long period of time. Um, so we, we try to keep as much material out of the mechanical rooms as possible, um, particularly on plastics, which will go off incredible amounts of smoke. This is the mechanical room. Uh, in here is the heart of the building. We have all of our HVAC equipment, the boilers, the chillers, all the air handlers in here, um, as well as the electrical panels. Um, to, that controls all the power here. When we have an emergency, we come into this room and we get to the blueprints. For instance, if we have an electrical problem, we would take out the electrical prints here, which shows all of the different spaces, um, both the site, which is the, uh, the top sheet, which shows where all the utilities come in from the road, uh, underground utilities, running down the driveway to the back of the building. 
and then it also identifies both um, lighting and receptacle power. If we have a particular problem, we need to turn off an electrical circuit, we'll come here, we'll find the room on the, on the blueprints, and when we have done that, the circuit will be identified right here on the uh, prints for us. These are the circuits for the entire building. The main distribution panels are on this side here. Each of these panels are labeled uh, with a label on top. They correspond to the blueprints. Once we identify which panel to go to, we would go to that particular panel and then inside each panel is a listing of each individual circuit. This is the boiler room. This is where we keep the, the um, emergency shutoff valves for our water system. We have both our domestic cold water, which is for our um, sinks and toilets, and the uh, fire sprinkler system. We're able to shut down one side of the system without shutting the other side off. If we do have an emergency, we can turn off just the sinks, but keep our fire system still in operation. And it's important to know where these valves are in case of an emergency. These are pumps for our hot water system. Um, they require regular maintenance. You have to uh, lubricate them on a regular basis as well as check all the couplings. The failure of any pump could um, cause the building to go without heat, which could lead to uh, freeze up of pipes and which could cause uh, major damage to the building. Maintaining your physical plant, you also need to maintain and protect your records, which includes electronic records on computers. Very simply, this means doing regular backups and keeping the backups off-site. Files should be backed up monthly, weekly, or even daily depending on the size of your organization. Make a schedule with a checkoff system to be sure it's followed. As a general rule, museum collections and collection records should not be stored in basement areas because of the potential for flooding. You also need to think about other water sources and avoid storage under environmental control systems or water pipes. Store collections and records in or on museum equipment at least six inches off the floor to prevent water damage from flooding. In one museum, significant objects were damaged when water pipes on the floor directly overhead burst and overflowed. You need to be aware of all the possible hazards when you're deciding on locations for storage. Federal and state laws recommend smoke and fire detectors for most areas containing museum collections. Neither of these systems, though, will do any good if they don't function properly during a disaster. You should have a regular schedule for testing all of your detectors and alarms. You can use the testing as an opportunity for training staff in the proper response to the alarms. Now along with the alarms, you should have a public address system in public areas if possible to tell people what to do when an alarm goes off. This system too will have to be tested on a regular basis. Your fire detection and suppression system can also be the difference between a minor fire and a catastrophe that destroys an entire building. Never take it for granted. If your systems haven't been upgraded recently, you should talk with your fire department or local insurance company about recent advances in these areas. Have them come and review your equipment and ask their advice. New fire suppression systems go beyond the typical sprinklers to include systems that spray mist or foam. Each system has its advantages and disadvantages, but you should make yourself aware of what's available particularly if you're planning renovations at your site.